Welcome to the service clinic at Low Country Harley Davidson. I'm Doc Harley. Throughout the week, people come up to me and say, Doc, I want to build my motorcycle stronger, but I want the reliability. What can I do? Do I add a throttle body? How about bigger pistons? How about a bigger cam? How about a super tuner? I say, time out. You said you wanted powerful and reliability. Let's talk a little bit. We're going to make this stronger but it's got to transform the stronger power we make here all the way back to the rear wheel. Well, to do that, this up and down motion has to be turned to turning that goes back to the clutch transmission to the rear wheel that feels great going down the road. So right here is where it all comes back together again, and this is the compensator. We need to talk about this and get this part of the motorcycle reliable before we make this a lot stronger. Let me show you. This is the compensator. It has gone through many evolutions to get to where it is now. Now this gentleman here, this is a 2010 Wide Glide. He opted for the Screamin' Eagle model back in 2010 when it was added as an option. But we're going to take a moment and go through a general history of what this compensator has gone through to compensate for the added power that Harley-Davidson has been putting into their motorcycles. Here's a little history on Harley-Davidson compensators, the tool that transforms the power from the motor back to the transmission and back to the rear wheel. In the shovel head and evolution days, we had a compensator that looked like this. Big nut holding it, ramps that kind of take the pulses from the motor and transform it to the rotation. We had springs, it's called a spring pack, about three of them inside there and this kind of absorbs the power and transforms it. The harder this hits, the more this has to compensate so it doesn't shove that power into the clutch and transmission and break something. Well, in 2006, guess what? Harley-Davidson goes up from the 80 cubic inches of a Evolution to a twin cam. We've got 88.95. So in 06, they came out with this. Yes, it was bigger and better for handling the extra horsepower that the Harley-Davidson company was making, but let's take a look at a little bit inside. Yeah, we have a bigger gear, but when we get down to it, we still have the little spring pack. Now, it took everything it could to handle the extra torque of the twin cam 88 and 95 cubic inch. And in fact, this is the first edition in 06, and you can see the weak spot was that it was bolted to the rotor, sheared off under extreme horsepower or torque building. So in 07, they got smarter. They made this part of the rotor. That took care of that weak point. But you can see, we're still dealing with this side springs. And if you have a twin cam from 07, definitely 08 to 10, uh, actually 11, this is what your motorcycle has. And you're coming to me and say, Doc, I want a 100 cubic inch. I want a 103, I want a 117. This was designed really for an 80 cubic inch motor. So the factory got smart, all right? In 2010, they came up with a better spring. Definitely a better spring. Actually, it's three and it can transfer seven times more torque than this one was ever designed to do. This was an option back in these days as a Screaming Eagle drag racing compensator. Finally, in 10, they decided it's time to update the st standard stock compensator. Now, they've gone through about four different renditions of this. This is one of the uh, ideas of theirs where they had a fiber plate instead of a spring and uh, this kind of slid as it, but as you can see, if we can get a little close up here, not sure, the backsides here, they wear. And this really got onto the Harley-Davidson engineers going, we've got a good design here, but it's not lasting. 2014, 
they pushed themselves to come up with something that was more reliable. 2014, you can find this on a stock standard Harley-Davidson. 14, 15, and 16 are proving to be reliable and handling the power of the 103, the 110. And now, we're actually having the 110 big bore and the 117 big bore performance motors offered to the public, and this can handle it. The reliability came from inside, oiling. They have made, and when you purchase this, you can retrofit this back to your, uh, let's say, go back to, to 10, and maybe even earlier, you'll have to check with the parts department at Low Country Harley-Davidson, but on the earlier primaries, they offer this unit that goes inside, and you have to buy a two-part epoxy. Now, you can see where this tip is, and what it does is it collects the oil and points it right here. So then this oil goes through where an updated bearing and into these areas where it helps oil and keep it lasting a lot longer. As I said earlier, this can be retrofitted back to motorcycles of earlier years. You'll have to check with your local Harley-Davidson dealer here at the parts counter at Low Country Harley-Davidson. They can look up and see what you can update yours and this is where you need to start your performance package. How can I get reliable horsepower that will last the life of my motorcycle with all the power improvements that I want to do? Once we take care of this compensator then we can add the big bore, we can add the cam and the tuner and the horsepower and you can be riding all the way to Sturgis even cross country and know that you'll be reliably there and back home here in Charleston, South Carolina. Got more questions on what will fit yours? Come on in and talk to the service clinic here at Low Country Harley-Davidson and our parts department. They'll set you up on what you need for your years. Some years you have to update your rotor because, as we said in the earlier ones, it was part of it. When you update to the bigger springs, this is separate. And on the later models, you'll have to purchase the two-part epoxy so you can put this plastic piece in here to help in the oiling. Now in 2014, 15, and 16, guys, your compensator's all ready and we can start building today. I'm Doc Harley. We'll see you next week.